straight up headshot right between the eyes. Oh man. Oh. That's too much fun, man. <laughs> What's up everybody? We are back to talking about the big rifles, the long range kind of stuff, the hunting stuff specifically. That one is the 6.5 Creedmoor 2020 from uh, Springfield Armory. And anytime we're talking about a big gun like that, we're probably talking big glass, which is also gonna be big money. Those big names, Night Force, Leopold, all that good stuff out there. So I've been getting back into a little bit of the long range, trying to do a little bit more hunting. I really wanted to see what the options are out there besides those big monster names out there to see if we can really get the most bang for the buck when it comes to the glass, because that's what we are all looking for. When it comes to putting something on top here, you can easily spend twice as much as the rifle real quick, fast in a hurry. So the Swamp Fox Kentucky Long here, this one is in the two to 12, so it's not nearly what that rifle could do, but somebody much more skilled than myself could take that two to 12 and do a lot of damage well, well uh, farther than distances I can shoot at right now, just because I'm still building my skill set the math in my head, all of those good things. And I have several other scopes and testing right now, some Night Force stuff, some Leopold stuff, some Vortex stuff. And one that is really surprising to me right now is Tract, T-R-A-C-T. That thing is probably one of the best bang for the bucks. I'll have a video on that coming real soon. But in all honesty, I don't really think all of us are gonna need like a Night Force attacker or something like that. Most of us hunting, having some fun, things like that, or even, you know, getting into competition, we're probably not going to need a three to four thousand dollar scope on a rifle. Now, if you want that, you go on with your bad self and buy whatever you want. Me, I don't have the budget for that. So I wanna see what we can get, what we can maximize for our profit out there that we make from our jobs and how much we can buy. We will get into the range footage first and then talk about all the specs on this, but a huge shout out to Hidden Hybrid Holsters, longtime supporter of the channel here. They make those sweet hybrid holsters with that suede-backed Amish-made leather and that Kydex up front. They got everything for all of your striker fire needs all the way into those big iron 1911s and well beyond that stuff. If you're interested in that hybrid love, they're super comfortable, great company, USA made, and a copy of a Constitution comes with every holster purchase. Check them out at hiddenhybridholsters.com. All right, so I got out on the range and I did 100 yards zero on this thing, which is very common for a rifle like this, and then you can confirm farther out depending on what your chosen task and purpose for this rifle is going to be. Uh, the one thing I will say is this went super quick because I used this Wheeler bore sighter that has a reflective target for the laser that it emits. Magnetic, put that on the end of the muzzle, it lases the target for you, dial it in, and you save a lot of time and a lot of money, especially when it comes to 6.5 Creedmoor because um, that stuff's not cheap. Some of those rounds are like at $5 right now. And a huge thank you to True Shot Gun Club they did supply some of the ammo for this video, so show them some love as well. Zero this thing out at 100 yards, and I'll throw a quick flash up here. You'll see the first target where I'm a little bit off to the left, but I just wanted to print a good group to see what the rifle was capable again. And you can see there's a lot of rounds, and I think that was six or seven rounds, and specifically that one that's about the size of a 12-gauge shell in the back, which is at 100 yards, that's, that's nothing. Let's be realistic. That's not, a, that's not great, but if you can carry that out further, that's much, much better, right? So this did perform very well. And then the next picture here that I'll roll in, you can see where I two hold one center dot. And then I did get a little one, a little bit low, but still I considered that zeroed. I pulled that shot a little low. So ultimately it was dialed in. We didn't have a ton of space out there. We, did, we weren't able to get past about 300-ish, maybe like 290, 300 yards. I uh, got my Vortex uh, rangefinder out there, lazed it out. But what we were shooting was a like a six by eight piece of steel on the head of the target. And it was just, it was too easy, right? Like it was just a lot of fun and too easy. Even the camera guy got in on it and was just whacking at that steel. So ultimately the performance out there was great. Now talking about the eye relief under use, if you don't know what the eye relief is, it's basically as you look through that scope, it's the box your eye has to be in, the difference between where your eye is and the beginning of that ocular end of the scope, right? So this is the objective end. This is the ocular end where your eye is, right? Ocular objective downrange. Should make sense to you guys. It's pretty generous. However, at that max magnification, you shrink in pretty good. So it, I want to say the spec says it's like a 3.4. I'm reading it right now. to like a 2.76 inch eye box in there. I will say 
at the highest magnification on these, you shrink down a lot. And that's very typical with every scope out there. I did notice it a little bit more when it came to the Swamp Fox. So I had to be right on point at max magnification. If there was any deviation of more than I would say, like a quarter inch on how far my head was from that scope, I got a lot of brown out. But I will say the glass is extremely clear with great edge to edge clarity if you're in that eye box. And of course the light transmission because we're shooting in a desert in Arizona, it's blazing bright. Getting it into lower you know, light areas, it might not perform as well. But again, we're talking about something in the sub $1,000 category, actually sub $800 category. So you're not gonna get that performance of say a Night Force, a Leopold, or even some of the higher end Vortex stuff out there that are gonna be well beyond two to three times what this optic is gonna cost you. Swamp Fox does say there's like a 90 plus percent light transmission. That number can mean good, it can mean other things because there are multiple different ways to get light transmission, whether it's coating, lenses, or the type of glass that's in there. So there are multiple different types of actual glass used in scopes. Your really high-end stuff, Leica, Swarovski, uh, some of the Night Force stuff, they're going to use a completely different style of glass that's going to give you a completely different look out there on the range. Less discoloration, more edge-to-edge -edge clarity, especially at that max magnification. I've also now converted almost everything to mill or mill radian style reticles. I've completely gone away from MOA because as my buddy loves to make fun of me for, he's an extreme long range shooter, competes in the king of two miles, uh, served in the range battalions with him, he was a sniper. He just loved to make fun of me. He's like, man, the only one using MOA are hunters and cops. I just don't get it. Uh, and the math really, to me, it's a little bit easier with mill, even though I grew up in the States and MOA is inches, quarter inches specifically on your dial. But for some odd reason, mill's just a little bit easier for me. So this reticle, this recce mill reticle in there, it's quite nice. It's the Christmas tree style. I'll roll on a photo for you guys so you can see it. It's clear, it's crisp. That's one thing I'll say about Swamp Fox. Their reticles have been really good for the price point on their scopes. And if you know that reticle, like the back of your hand, you really don't have to dial much. If you know the math in there and you're comfortable using it, it's been very good. So once I got this thing zeroed in, like I said, we only went out to about 300 yards. Um, I did try to take quite a longer shot. I saw a soda can out in the distance on a mountain. Um, I got close, but I wasn't able to hit it. And we're talking like 600 yards shooting at a crushed soda can that was on the side of the mountain. It was blue, so it stood out like a sore thumb. But I didn't dial at all. I just used the reticle. Um, I know it fairly well. And I was within like two inches of the can. The can didn't take a direct hit, but it got thrown off the side of the hill and kind of rolled down. So if you know your reticle, if you know all that stuff and you have your dope card or you know that in your head, you're gonna be very successful with a reticle like that. Now talking about those turrets and all that stuff, cause this is an illuminated reticle as well. So you do have several levels of brightness. I think it's 11 or 12. We'll get into that on the specs. So if you're using this in kind of a you know more dim environment, you can turn the illumination on. So that's very nice as well. But on all of the turrets minus the parallax adjustment, that's a smooth adjustment. But windage and elevation, you do have a very nice defined audible tactile click on those push-pull turrets. So I'm a huge fan of push-pull turrets. If you don't know what that is, basically if you look, I can pull the turret up, make my adjustment, push it back down and it locks. So I just hit my light. <laughs> One one of the good things about that is you don't have to worry about this getting uh, getting bumped and, and rotating. So it's not gonna rotate until I pop it up, make that adjustment, and then I can lock it, right? So that's huge to me. I love that style of turret. Not all scopes are like that. Some of the much nicer ones are, but that's just something that I look for and I found works for me because I tend to carry multiple things out to the range with me. Sometimes they ride in the back of the truck in cases and they get thrown around, bounced around. So. I have seen them get adjusted um, by a motion and strikes they take in the bed of, my, bed of my pickup truck. And as far as dialing up that magnification, you got a couple choices on this little help lever right here. So your throw lever, they've got a really high shark fin one and then this kind of medium sized one. I like that one, but it's very smooth, very easy. Um, and that's kind of nice. I've had some scopes where it was like you needed a channel lock set of pliers to crank that thing over. And I've had other ones that felt like almost too loose to me. So this is a very nice intermediate engagement. 
So you don't have to worry about getting adjusted on its own, but when you go to adjust it quickly, you're gonna be able to do that. And we've reached the time for my spec people that wanna read everything out. So here is your elevator music and specifications. So on that note, I'm kind of curious. It seems to be some people love it when they're like read all of the specs to the most minute detail of things. But I found that most of the audience doesn't. So let me know in the comments if you like it when I just splash the specs up there with that sweet, sweet elevator music so you can hit the pause button, read it if you want, or just quickly bypass it and get to the meat of the video. All right, so what are the positives? What are the negatives? And did I find anything wrong or have any issues with the Swamp Fox Kentucky Long? And in all of these, we have to remember price point because we're not going to get the same glass and everything out of a 500 to six, even $800 style optic as we will out of something that's much higher in price, that 12, 15, 1800, three, $4,000 style optic. So keep that in mind. I will say for the price point, it has solid glass. There's no color hewing to my eye. You've got good edge to edge clarity, although it does diminish uh, along with that eye box at the max magnification. Again, common, but at this price point, it's what I would expect. The pop-up turrets on there, huge positive, my favorite. The throw lever on there, you get a couple choices. They're sleek, they're smooth, they just fit right in the grooves on that ring, and it maneuvers nicely. So those are definitely big positives. But this isn't a puff piece, so I did notice a problem, and I did reach out to Swamp Fox on this optic because even though it's got those resettable turrets that I absolutely love, I noticed something upon doing the reset to zero on them. I made my adjustments, I went to put the cap back on, and right here, you're going to have those marks where it should go completely back to zero. You've got a white dot and then your red line for the zero again, right there. And I'll probably throw in some B-roll for you so you can actually see what I'm talking about. It doesn't quite go back to a perfect zero on there. So that white line from the turret does not match up to the line on the scope body itself where the white dot and the red line on the turret should line up perfectly like this at zero. Well, what that has to do with is in here, there are splines that the cap fits over, right? Just like the axle of a car, it fits over those splines. It, they're just not fine enough in there. So it's, it's too thick. So you've got like a 50-50 chance, depending on your scope mounts and your rings and how far it's positioned forward or backwards to where it's either going to match up perfectly or you might be one off on the windage or elevation, whether positive or negative or left or right. Uh, Swamp Fox knows about that. It was an issue with those. They are redesigning those uh, splines from my understanding. But that's just something to keep into account. And apparently I got extra lucky because both my elevation and windage are one off. So I always have to remember that I'm always high and right. Um, and that's just kind of the way that I sectioned it. That way I know that I'm one high and I'm one right and that's actually zero, zero. But you could be completely dead on. Um, it just, like I said, depends on height of the scope, height of the mount and where you're placing it that's gonna kind of dictate. So it's like a 50-50 chance. So is that a huge issue? Um, no, is that an issue where I was kind of like bummed a little bit? Absolutely, I wanted that thing to line up perfectly. But that's also something I've noticed on other kind of more moderately priced scopes, like even Vortex. Uh, my current Viper PST Gen 2 does the same thing. It's not quite as far off, but it's definitely not straight on point. And leading into that price point, this one is 419 depending on magnification and reticle options because there are several different versions. So two to 12, I saw for 419 out there. Putting that in comparison, we're talking like a Rhydon X3, uh, maybe a Vortex Venom style quality price point in here. And I think it does hang with those. I've had some of the Vortex stuff, some of the Strike Eagle stuff, some of that. And I've had uh, an opportunity to shoot some of the Venom stuff. And I've also had the opportunity to shoot much higher level optics. You can definitely tell the difference, right? So. In the price point, the price category that's in, I think it hangs with all of those other names that a lot of us out there already know. I think a lot of it's really gonna come down to what brand you like, what brand your friends are carrying, and ultimately what brands you've probably researched. Because let's be realistic, a $419 scope like this, although it is a mill system, it's pretty nice, it's been tested to like 1100 Gs and all that, this isn't a battle optic, right? No one's carrying this into a war zone. This is gonna be for those of us that wanna have some fun, reach out, maybe some light competition, use it for a hunting scope, whatever, break in your kids, teach them on something cheap so if they break it, you don't you know, worry about, oh, I just broke my $3,000 night force. And I think that's really the zone a lot of us are in. You know, I don't need every rifle I have 
to have a $3,000 optic on it. I'm totally okay with like a Bushnell trophy on some things because a lot of good old boys shot that 30-06 or even, you know, the 243, 308 and whacked a lot of deer from pretty good distances with a Bushnell trophy. Now, if you're interested in sticking around for my kind of long range journey, I actually just built an Aero uh, Air 10 and 6.5. I've got a ton of other optics coming in, a lot of really good stuff. And I got a Bergara BR-14 Carbon. Awesome little gun and it's a 22 trainer. So I just can't wait to get out there and have some fun with that because you know, cheap ammo, tons of fun and get to work on those skills and see how far you can take that little tiny 22. And if you're interested in like this bore sight, I cannot recommend this thing enough. I will leave a link down below for this. Such a money and time saver out there, especially when you're sighting in your 30 cal stuff, your, your, you know, your nicer rounds, you got to use a bore sighter. It's just, you know, popping the bolt out and looking down range at the target might get you close, but you know, it's nice to only have to make adjustments of inches rather than feet on the target. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down below about the long range stuff or about anything you saw here today. I'm just really curious your thoughts, especially on that Swamp Fox brand. And of course, get subbed up. We're gonna pass 100,000. Huge thank you to all of the audience out there. I try to respond to every single comment you guys leave. If you look down below, I respond generally at least once to every comment across my entire channel. It's a ton of work, but if you guys are leaving a comment, I should be responding and it's me. It's not somebody else. I don't have somebody doing it for me. So I appreciate that because I've actually had a ton of fun engaging with people and I've actually met some people out there in public now that I've had conversations with online. And that's just really cool because it's all about building community, building trust, having fun and doing what we love. So with all that being said, go out and have some long range fun because it is a ton of fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.